Um, nah, th- this was good. <laughs> yeah, much better than uh, Clerks 3. Yeah. Really that much. So, you know what's a bummer is we have to talk about Kevin Smith again right now. Why? Because I'm going to tell you about the development process behind this movie. And for a very long time, Kevin Smith was attached to direct. Oh, boy. Yeah. Um, very glad that didn't happen. Um, well, if he did this, he might not have done Clerks 3. That would have been good. Yeah, but this would have been horrible. But we wouldn't have had to watch Clerks 3. But I like that there's a good Fletch movie and I want to see more of them. Oh, you want more? I want them to make a hundred of these. I don't understand why this isn't a, a TV show. John Hamm can't get off his ass and do six of these a year. I've always felt that way about the movie. Uh, which one is it? The Nice Guys? Yeah, that should be a TV show too. I agree. That would be incredible. Yeah. Sometimes I get that mixed up with the other guys. The Nice Guys is like truly like a masterpiece. That's a great movie. That's overstating it, but it is a great movie. No, that is a great, great, great movie. All right. So this movie. Better than Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. And that's a great movie. I disagree. Um, oh. It's like that movie, but better. <laughs> I feel the opposite. Uh, all right. So so this is back in the 90s, Logan. Like after Fletch lives, obviously, like the property was dead. Nobody wanted to make a Fletch movie for a long time. It's a horrible movie. Um, but then they Miramax got the rights. Harvey and Bob, baby. The demon spawn of Miriam and Max. Back at it. And they got the rights to Fletch, and they immediately offered it to their king, who at the time was Kevin Smith, coming off of uh, Amy, I believe. And um, Kevin Smith tried to get this movie made for a really long time. First, Chevy Chase really wanted to be in it, and he was like... (laughs) Beg, he was like, I feel like he would hate Kevin Smith. He, he does. At, like they didn't get along, and like nothing Kevin Smith wanted to do, Chevy Chase wanted to do, and so then Kevin Smith did an interesting thing, where he decided there's so Fletch is based on a series of books by this dude Gregory McDonald, who's like a pulp fiction writer, and um, I thought that was QT. <laughs> very good. One of the uh, Fletch books is this one called Fletch One. And it's basically like the Batman year one of Fletch. And so the reason he chose that to adapt is that the character is then too young for Chevy Chase to play. Yeah. It's brilliant. And so he um, he hired, he wanted Jason Lee. Hmm. You know, that's his boy. They'd done like Mar-Rats. three movies in a row together. Yeah, they did Mallrats, Chasing Amy, Dogma, and Jay and Bob Strike Back. He's in all so of those. So four. Yeah, and um, and Jason Lee was not well liked by by Harvey. Yeah, why by our not? friend because he just didn't think like he's a he's not bankable. Jay, like he's like he's in all of your movies, Kevin, and all of your movies make thirty million dollars at the box office. We want this to be a hit. Is he on that show at the time? It was pre My Name Is Earl. Okay. Yeah, he didn't that, know he would go on to be uh, the chipmunk's father, how bankable this guy would really become. It's true, man. Lee. He had no idea. <laughs> he, got, he got it together in the 2000s. <laughs> uh, but here's who Harvey wanted, Logan. Yeah. Zach Braff. Okay. They're the same guy, basically. Yeah. Zach Braff from The Scrubs. Chicken Little. I guess not yet. He played JD. I remember that much. He's no Superman. Is that show, that show? Yeah, he is no Superman. And uh, <laughs> that's such a fucking theme song. Oh, anyway. Uh, so they want Zach Braff. Kevin Smith, not into it. For a while, he's like working with Braff, but there's creative differences. So eventually, Smith drops out. Then, do you know who Harvey Weinstein replaced him with? Brian Singer. No, listen to this. Bill Lawrence, the creator of Scrubs. Wow, what a coincidence. So was Harvey Weinstein just the biggest Scrubs fan in the world at this point of his life? I think so. And what about Scrubs? Like, I've never watched Scrubs and been like, this is just like Fletch. (laughs) (laughs) What are we doing? You understand why he might have liked it, though? Why he might have liked Scrubs? Why Harvey might have been such a big fan? Do yeah. you get the appeal? 
Yeah, because Eric Weinberg was on the writing staff, and he's known he's in jail now for raping many women. Oh, okay. Yeah, so Harvey connected to that show, yeah. and um, and Bill, uh, he ends up getting replaced also, and Braff drops off, and so then it's gonna be Steve Pink, who's like John Cusack's co-writer who worked on the Hot Tub Time Machine movies. Okay, yeah. So he's gonna do it. And then he drops out. I mean, they were trying to get this movie made for years. So, and then in 2013, it came close again. They were going to make it uh, with Jason Sudeikis. Yeah, he'd be good, kind of. Yeah, he'd be all right as, as Fletch, I guess. Yeah, as good as John Hamm, probably. I'd like him to be less kind. Um, <laughs> what do you mean? Did, did, he, did you not like John Hamm? That thing's fine. I thought Hamm killed it in this movie, honestly. Really? I thought he was I, great. Yeah, sometimes I'll, I'll really watch like Ham. I'll watch. I really will watch Ham in a hundred of these. I would. What's your favorite Ham thing besides Mad Men? Like, what's your uh, favorite m- movie? Uh, Top Gun. <laughs> I mean, look, Ham. He, it didn't pan out for him with movies, so I don't know what you're asking me. I'm asking you what your favorite performance is from John Ham in a movie. Uh, probably Maverick. Bridesmaids. Seen Maverick? Probably, bri- yeah, he's in Maverick, but probably Bridesmaids. I like him as the. What about Baby Driver? He's good in Baby Driver. He's really oh, good yeah. in Baby Driver. Yeah. He's good in Bad Times at the El Royale, too. He is good in that. You ever see uh, Tag? Yeah, I fucking did see that in, in theaters. What a waste of time. I think, he's, I think he's funny in that movie. Yeah. I mean, it's not a good movie, but he's okay in it. Okay. Anyway. What about Curb? Yeah. He's great on Curb. He's all yeah, he is great on Curb. He's he's a really worthwhile comedic actor. And I do think that sometimes he falls into a rut where he goes to this like go to thing where it's just like overly confident, handsome guy. Like that's yes. his stock character. And I don't like when he does that. But because Fletch is such a specific character, like he really has to like do a performance in this movie. And uh, Ham, Ham does have some humility, though, where it's like he knows he's like really handsome obviously because he's been told he's really handsome forever but he but he's still like on the outside looking in from all these other movie stars absolutely like, and totally he's never agree. been like a sexiest man alive or anything no right? and it's because he was cast on mad men to be like the sexiest dude in the 60s and it was like a different type of dude back then they're like a little skinnier like john ham like doesn't have muscles every every movie star has muscles now he's pretty built no he's not he's very he's wiry chest he's got a what do you but mean, if wiry? you see, wouldn't be if you no, Spider-Man. I'm telling you, if you see this dude without his shirt on, he just looks like a dude. But, but, but they wouldn't really. Yeah, because they, I mean, we saw it. We off. saw it in Mad Men, dude. We saw his shirt off when he t- and he about just to looked like shower. a dude. Mm, I don't know about that. He's I mean, like, he looks Mel better than me, but like, okay, you know, it's not saying that much. Like, so is J- Kevin Smith looks better than me these days. <laughs> Kevin Smith. <laughs> yeah, he lost all that weight. All right. Um, all right. So uh, you want to talk about this movie? Yeah, Greg Matola made it. Oh, right. Yeah, I guess I should talk about the version we're talking about. Oh, I wanted uh, to say something. Fletch was the seventh franchise you guys ever covered. That seems crazy to me. Yeah. Well, it was just, it was a Henry pick. Like, it, there's no way, if if I was running this show from the beginning, like, we still wouldn't have gotten to Fletch. But yeah, like Fletch is like Zoolander or something. Yeah, yeah. But like Henry was we hadn't done a comedy yet, I think, at that point. And I have the list. Yeah. So what Die did we Hard, done? Basic Instinct, Scream, Back to the Future, Superman, Matrix, Fletch. Yeah, so we did so, Back yeah. to the Future, but like this we hadn't done like a straight comedy and uh and, and we we were talking about doing that, but it turned it was a Henry pick and so he picked Fletch. Yeah. Okay. Has he seen this? I didn't even look at that. Yeah, I think he gave it a three on Letterboxd. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So this movie, we have a writer named Zev Barrow, and he's just like a TV dude. He's like a staff writer on a bunch of TV shows. He works a lot with this dude, Josh Schwartz, who created uh, The O.C., but he didn't write for The O.C. He wrote for Chuck and uh, yeah, and Forever, which was another thing. Um, actually... Most recently, he worked on that show Outer Range with Josh Brolin, which I actually thought was pretty worthwhile. 
and our director is a fellow by the name of Greg Matola, who, I mean, I've been saying for years, I mean, let that guy make whatever he wants. Yeah, I agree. You make super bad in Adventureland, you should be able to make whatever you want. And not just that. I mean, go. he started with The Day Trippers, which is a fucking baller movie. And like nobody knows that movie. But you know what? I was browsing HBO Max earlier today, and it's fucking on there. So everybody should watch The Day Trippers. All right, I will. All right. Uh, so that movie didn't do well, but Judd Apatow loved it. And he like was like, let me bring this dude into like the Freaks and Geeks fold. And so he it was too late for Freaks and Geeks, but he wrote for um, Undeclared, and he like directed episodes of that. And so that's sort of what he was doing. He like found his place on TV for a while. And then when Apatow got all the clout to start making movies, one of the first dudes he called was this Matola kid. Oh, kid, he's fucking bald. Um, and, uh, and, and he <laughs> Jason got Alexander to... was bald pretty young. Yeah, I guess. So, so he, he did super bad, which is a masterpiece. Yeah. And that was followed up by a movie he wrote and directed called Adventureland. And Adventureland was a disappointment at the box office, but you love it. I think is a stone cold classic. Yeah. 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 Then it sort of went bad for him. Unfortunately, Can I tell you who I love, please. Martin star. I feel like Martin star should be in everything. I agree. If your thing's a little stale, add Martin star and then it'll be more fun. You never watched Silicon Valley. Nope. You like that. that. There's a ton of Martin Starr in that. No, but here's one of my favorite parts of uh, Party Down. Yeah, he's so good as Roman. Really funny. Mm. All, all like the best story. Ordinary lines, story people. Lines. Ordinary people. <laughs> the porn episode. There's like a great porn episode with him. Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah. We're like, oh. It's like the porn awards it's, or something. Yeah, the AVN awards. It's so good. Anyway, um, so that's Adventureland. He followed that up with Paul, which was like. Oh, I didn't know he did that. Yeah, that was like a Simon Pegg thing. And then he did that TV movie, Clear History, with um, with Larry David. Yeah. All right. So then he did the pilot of the newsroom. I remember that. And that, that was weird. And he worked on that for like all the three seasons. So he hasn't made a movie in a little while. And now he's back with Fletch. Oh, he also did this movie, Keeping Up with the Joneses. I haven't seen that. Is that Have a you parody? No, no, it's like a com mainstream comedy with Zach Galifianakis and John Hamm. Oh, that'd be like a spoof. No, Gal Gadot is in this. What oh. the fuck? Should I watch this? That's a selling point, Gal Gal Gadot. No, it just seems weird that there's a movie directed by Greg Matola starring John Hamm, Zach Galifianakis, and Gal Gadot that I haven't seen. Yeah. All right. I think I gotta watch this bullshit. Watch it. You watch that, I'll watch the day trippers. All right, deal. Deal. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Um All right, we'll talk about the movie. All right. Well, uh he finds a dead body, right? And he's like, Oh shit. What's the... actually he doesn't even freak out. He's like calls him very calmly. He's yeah. like, Well, it's not an emergency, she's already dead. That's I actually funny. love I love that scene of him on the phone with the cops. Yeah, no, he's very good. There's like a lot of subtle stuff that he does in this movie. There's like one moment where there's a picture frame that's like perfectly straight. And he makes it crooked and like doesn't draw attention to it. He just like keeps walking around in the room. I thought that was very funny. There's a lot of shit like that. And it's a weird movie to see in theaters. Like I saw I saw this um, with Eric, I told you, and there's no really big laughs. Like it's just like an entire theater of people just consistently chuckling to themselves. Can, can I say one part where I did like laugh? Kind yeah. Of? Uh, there's a character Grizz and I like, I like this character. Grizz. By the way, I love that her name is Grizz. Why? I just think it's funny. It's fun to say. Okay, yeah, it is the Grizz. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there's just one moment where, for no reason, he starts walking with her, and he she thinks they're gonna go get in an elevator, so she walks in the elevator, and then he just pushes the button and sends her down the elevator. I love that. Yeah, that was the funniest part of the whole movie. I thought. I like that actress too. She's um, she's great. I first saw her on New Girl. She she um, so like near the end of New Girl, um. Lamorne Morris's character was with Nassim Pedrad and not she played Nassim Pedrad's sister. Who is I mean, Nassim Pedrad? She was on like Saturday Night Live, dude. Oh, sorry, dude. <laughs> She's famous. <laughs> sorry. When I name a famous person on the show, you should know who I'm talking about. Let me tell you this name. Let me see if you know this name. Lorenza Izzo. 
Is that a famous person? Yeah, she's in this movie. She's married to Fletch. She's she's in real life married to Tim Roth or Eli Roth. Wait, whichever really? Roth it is. What? Yeah, what are you talking about? Who Lord, is she in this movie? She's married to Fletch. Come on, Fletch she's like the her. like the Italian lady. It's that... like her mom is Marcia Gay Harden, right? Oh yeah, or something like that. I I didn't put that together. That you're right. That is that lady that married Eli Roth. Yeah, Eli Roth. Yep. Yeah, she's in Knock Knock. She's got a great uh shower scene. Absolutely, with she does. I once listened Keanu to a, I once listened to a podcast that was Eli Roth and her on the podcast being interviewed, and he did not let her get off fucking word in and it drove really? me insane yeah were they talking about that movie yeah, um they were talking about that movie the green inferno okay did he make that yeah oh, and I she's in know. it i believe okay i kind of like her though no she's like she's not bad i thought she was actually really funny in this but you know whatever anyway what about roy wood jr i, I love that guy yeah he's good too He's it's such an unassuming cast. Like it's literally third build. We have Roy Wood Jr. Right. He's like a dude who was on Last Comic Standing like 15 years ago. <laughs> yeah, the second biggest star I think is Marsha Gay Harden, right? Yeah, I mean Marsha Gay no Harden at least has really. an Oscar. Well, Kyle MacLachlan is in it. Yeah, she's more famous than him. More famous than Kyle MacLachlan the oh, star no, no. What about of the Slattery? Twin Peaks? What about the Slattery? You think Slattery's more famous? He's in Marvel. Yeah, for like two seconds. But he's in like four of them for a, a total of like 10 minutes. I saw him on the fucking good fight this season. He didn't even end up with the girl. Yeah, who did? Uh, Gary Cole. <laughs> Who's that? Is that Taya Leone? What is she in? What? Taya <laughs> Leone? Is she in one of those shows? No. Oh, I I had, I oh yeah. No, no, she does. You're thinking of uh, Madam President. Madam Wait, Madam Secretary? <laughs> yes, Madam Secretary. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I watched two episodes of that. They <laughs> couldn't take it. Yeah, it was pretty bad. And <laughs> then we also see the other f- kind of famous person in this movie is Annie Mumolo, who's um sure. she's uh Kristen Wiggs co writer. She was supposed to play the Melissa McCarthy part in Bridesmaids. But she was pregnant at the time, and so they got wow. more. It's fucking crazy. That's awesome. I know. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, she, that's like a, a Mission Impossible 2. Yeah. Guy, she, right? Annie Mumolo is the Do Grey Scott of comedy. Do Grey Scott. I've always yeah. said that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you really said that before? No. But okay. that's funny. Uh, all right. What else you got? What else do I got? I like that this is in Boston, so you get lots of like Celtics, uh, Lakers stuff. That's kind of good. I like that too. Yeah, they yeah, do they, pay lip service to, to basketball in this, which I appreciate. But they don't mention any current stuff, like how the Lakers just won or how but they the Celtics didn't want, they, were in they the didn't finals want it last to season. Be beholden to this time, man. It's got to feel timeless. They, they have Kareem in the last movie being like, "Pass me the rock, Fletch." That's right? the last movie. We're trying to do something different here. The, it's a what, classic. This could be a classic. Here's what I like about this movie. All right, as a kid. I loved like drugstore paperbacks, all right? So like when your parents would take you to like the pharmacy or something, I sound like I'm fucking ancient. How old yeah. am I? Uh, I don't know. So 55, I think sometimes. It's crazy. Like what is this anecdote? Yeah, I don't, you're at the pharmacy with your mom? But this would happen as a kid. Like, your parents would take you like a convenience store or the pharmacy. <laughs> and <laughs> there used to be like a spinner rack of comics, right? So like my parents would like let me take an X-Men comic or something. But there would also be a spinner rack of like soft cover detective paperbacks. I swear to you, this was in like every pharmacy in the in the United States. And uh, I used to fucking just buy random books of those and I would read the little mystery. And then my dad got me into this um, this dude, Robert B. Parker, this author, who wrote um, a series bi- uh, about this dude, Spencer. And they recently made that into a movie with Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, Spencer Confidential of yeah. Post Malone. And it's one of the worst movies I've ever seen. And, like, it, it's amazing. Like, it's perfect for this. It, it's, like, Spencer would have been great, like, for 
this kind of low stakes detective movie and the, and you could just run and run just make a bunch of them but no they decided they wanted to make it like a big budget action movie and fucking mark Wahlberg is in it i fucking <laughs> this world all right um how do we get on that well, i was talking about like but what i was trying to say is the thing that this movie does better than any movie i've ever seen in my life holy shit is capture the tone of a random drugstore spinner rack paperback yeah it is just breezy to the max you just sit there listen to the story let them tell you that story before you know it it's done and you'll never think about it again what about like the princess bride what about like that why are you bringing up that I don't know. I feel like that's kind of a breezy uh, tale like that. But that's like a fantasy thing. I'm t- I'm talking about these like procedurals, you know, just get in there. Tell me a mystery. All right. Give me some clues. Give me some suspects. And this is then, better than anything. I think this captures that breezy tone better than any movie I've ever seen. Better than the first one? I don't even think that's what that movie's going for. I think that movie is trying to be a mainstream comedy starring Chevy Chase. Yeah. Okay. Whereas this, know, this one... This isn't a bad take. This is actually pretty good. I, I understand. I think with this one, they were really trying to make an adaptation of the Greg McDonald books. And Confess Fletch, I think, is the first book in the series. So, like, the intention is to just, like, keep going. The next one's called Fletch's Fortune... And maybe they'll make that, except I don't know anybody that saw this. We saw it. We're here to <laughs> spread awareness. <laughs> Listen to this. This movie had a $20 million budget, Logan. Yeah. Do, you want, do you want to know how much it made at the box office? Uh, three. $561,788. Internationally? Like worldwide? No, I think it's domestic. All right, so maybe like 700 k Look, uh, ultimately, they'll probably make their money back because I'm sure Really? They... I don't know about no, that. No, because anything makes their money back now because the streaming deals. They're a long ways away. Yeah. You, like, you can make any bullshit now, and it'll make money just because of streaming deals. So if this is on Hulu, you think they'll get their money's worth? Yeah, you know, it's like a... I don't know about that. I think if, if like, in... In three weeks, if Hulu offers five million dollars, they're just gonna they're just gonna give it to them. <laughs> You're probably not wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean that's fair, but I I hope that it succeeds on some level, and I because I'd really like to see another one. Like, I I really enjoyed watching this, and I rewatched it for the pod. You know, after only watching it like a month ago, right. And like it wasn't annoying to rewatch, like it, it was, it still played. Breezy, light story. Yeah, lots of stuff going on. Yeah, good characters. Yeah, in an intriguing mystery, really super low stakes mystery. It does involve murder, but like it's it's treated so offhandedly. And um, yeah, they give you a bunch of suspects. Kyle MacLachlan, what what's he up to? What's Annie Mumolo up to? You know, and then. It gets in, it gets out, it tells you a fucking story. It makes you laugh a few times. I thought it was Marsha Gay Harden. should I be she like was this. Killer. What? Yeah. I thought Marsha Gay Harden was the killer. Oh, uh, yeah. I did. That did occur to me just because I was like, why would Marsha Gay Harden be in this? She's sort of like off her rocker. She's she's really fun in this movie. Yeah. I like when she goes for broke like this, man. Like, it's almost like a comedic version of what she's doing in The Mist. Well, now she's stuck on. Uh... Uh, what's that show she's doing? She's on a show? Pitch Perfect. She's doing a show with the guy, Skylar Aston from Pitch Perfect. That guy has a show? So help me, Todd. Oh my God. That's, yeah. she's on that? On a CBS show and that's her son and he's like a cop or something. And the show is called So Help Me, Todd. Like journalist? I don't know what's going on. Yeah. It's like that show Better Off Ted. Wait, what's that then? That was a sitcom from like 10 years ago. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, so now she's like, I'm in a movie again. This is exciting. I mean, I guess it is exciting for her. Yeah, with the John Hamm, this is awesome. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm good. What do you give this movie? <laughs> uh, 
I give it three stars. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I, I think this is like a solid three. And honestly, if you want to give this four, I can see it. Yeah, I could too, but I'm not going to. I'm not going question. to either, but I can see it. Go ahead. At one point, he gets arrested for murder. They, they decide like, all right, we've got enough against this guy. We're going to arrest him for murder. So he goes to jail and then he calls his wife and he's just like, hey, I need you to bail me out. And then in the next scene, he's out of jail. Is that how that happens? If you get arrested for murder, you can just call somebody and say, hey. Like, it, I, I think that's depends. like a whole process no, no, no. if you're de- arrested for murder. No, 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 no. It depends how much money you have, Logan. It, everything comes down to money. If you have the money to bail someone out, you can bail them out. For murder? Yeah. I don't know about this. No. He was arrested for murder. Yeah, crimes are legal like, that was the charge, for the rich. Murder. You don't know this by now? I feel like I do, but it doesn't happen that much where murder happens and then they just walk. I guess OJ. It happens Aside all the that, time. <laughs> really? What are you talking about? I don't know. I don't know how often this happens. Yeah. What about they, they framed those making a murder people? Well, I don't know about that, I guess. <laughs> well, I do. I know for sure. Okay. Yeah, you know way more than me. You know, I forgot to bring up my MVP of this movie. You forgot? I'm going Grizz. <laughs> oh, I, lo- I love that choice. But no, there's one scene where John Hamm goes to a yacht club and Eugene Merman plays a security guard at the oh, yacht loved club. Him. And they clearly just let Eugene Merman do everything anything he wanted in that scene and he's so fucking funny yeah that's a great scene actually he tells him that uh is uh whoever they're talking about died in a propeller accident yes. Very funny. Yeah. And then he dies at the end he gets shot right i don't remember that, that does dies he? i was like oh damn i like that dude and then he just died yeah so i'm gonna go with that guy all right that's a great pick yeah i that's think the grizz is a great pick too maybe i'm just saying that because i like to say her name out loud and i wanted Who- to again Who's your LVP? Because I don't really know. No one's really bad in this. Uh oh. I mean, Ronald, Kyle McLaughlin. I'm not giving Kyle McLaughlin an LVP. What's wrong with you? It, Lorenza Izzo, the wife. Mm, she's okay. I don't want to go Marcia Gate Harden. I don't want to go Fletch. I don't want to go Grizz or uh, or Roy Wood. I know. What a strong movie that I'm having trouble coming up with an LVP. I can't believe it. They um, have a KG jersey. Go KG. What's KG mean? Oh, Kevin Garnett. Oh yeah, I did notice that Kevin Garnett jersey. Um, you know, I'm a. I'm gonna go. Just kidding. I love Kate. I'm. I'm gonna go with with Eli Roth's lady, but but nothing against her. Her performance is fine in this. Yeah. I'm going to go her for marrying Eli Roth, not for anything else. Yeah, this that's movie. fully fair. Terrible, terrible decision. Yeah. Who, who watches Hostel and Cabin Fever and is like, you know what? I want to spend the exciting. rest of my life with that man. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. I want to fuck the bear Jew until I die. <laughs>